Facebook, sorry I'm a minute late here. Uh, this is Jerry from the Rhythmia Life Advancement Center in Guanacaste, Costa Rica. Rhythmia, a minute about Rhythmia. Rhythmia is a life advancement center that uses a multitude of, of different things to bring about something called a soul merger. Uh -huh. Those things are breathwork, meditation, great food, the cleanse, uh, plant medicine, metaphysical teachings, all to bring around this ancient event called a soul merger uh -huh. or in certain in certain uh religions they call it a, a soul reclamation yeah uh so what what how many have gone through the door so almost fifteen thousand people have come here and had this tremendous event happen in their life about 97.11 percent of those that walk through the door have had uh, this event happen. And usually directly thereafter, what they experience is a call to become a beneficial presence on the planet. This is like just how it works. Uh -huh. And this is number five of a little series I'm doing called The Road Less Taken, which has to do with life after you make that decision to become a beneficial presence, right? A little bit more about this though. 92.07% of those that have come here and had this experience six months later say that this event is still working in their life. Uh huh. That's a that's a, a falcon who follows me around. You hear it screaming in the back. Uh, but say that that this was the week that changed their life six months after they've been here. So it's a really, really unique place. Well, what kind of people sit on our board of directors? Well, let me tell you, Martin Luther King's son, uh -huh. Michael Bernard Beckwith from the Agape Spiritual Center, Caesar Milan, the dog whisperer, Kelly Slater, the greatest surfer of all time, uh, Jack Canfield, the Guinness Book World Record books, Chicken Soup of the Soul, da, da, da. And I can go on and on and on and on with who has come, Tony Coe, top 100 of the Forbes 100 uh, wealthiest self-made women in the world. Uh -huh. Why? Why do they lend their name to a place like this? Because it's the only one of its type that is run and conducted with the professionalism, with, with medical licenses, with a tremendous amount of staff. We have 175 employees uh -huh, here. So 190, I think, in total. It's It's more uh, about on average 2.2 more employees than guests most of the time. Yeah. So that's what makes this place special. So I wanted to talk a little bit about this process of once you decide to become a beneficial presence and it's from a merged place in you, which means it's not because of your neighbor, because of a girl or boy you're trying to impress or man or woman you're trying to impress or because of your mom or dad or that, but it comes from here that this is it and there's clarity on it. This is exactly where I want to go to. Uh huh. Once that occurs, once that clarity happens, once you have a vision of what that is, there are a couple of things that are in that process. Number one, it's going to take longer than you've ever dreamed of. Uh huh. I like to use a decade uh, myself. I've seen it happen in seven years. I've also seen it happen in 14 years, but I like to use a decade. Uh huh. It's going to give you more than you've ever imagined or could conceive. Uh -huh. The benefits of this thing is going to give you more than you ever could imagine or ever could conceive. And it's going to be the hardest thing you've ever done in your life. <clears throat> I have had successful businesses to be, to give an example. I started a company that when I was 38 that I sold when I was 42 for about $90 million uh, US. And, and although that was uh, a fun event, yeah, it, it didn't have uh, teeth in it or richness in it because it wasn't done from this place of, of becoming a beneficial presence. And it was super hard. It happened premature, but it was super, super hard. Uh, this business that I'm in now, is the most rewarding, the hardest, the most setbacks, 
Um, but I get to see miracles every week. I get to see something that I don't think anybody else gets to see that I know of in the world. I get to see this every week and it's by design. I created the life I have now by design, which once you decide to become a beneficial presence, you're going to have your design. Uh, and and if that if that merger happened here or in an event like what happens here, you're going to have very 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 uh, clear way a way of how to do this now. The bigger your vision, the more scrutiny you're going to fall under. Uh-huh. And, and the more hate you're going to generate because of your vision. So, so what do I mean by that? Well, all of those who have a vested interest in the old way of doing what you're proposing a new way for are going to hate you. Uh-huh. I had that in the plastic surgery business. I came in with a different way of of marketing, managing, and selling plastic surgery. And uh, all of the people from the they wanted to burn me out of that industry, and now they're all doing it 20 years later. Uh -huh. uh, so, I mean, that's part and parcel of it. So, so if you want to take a look at, is your vision big enough? Then ask, is it creating enough dissension? Is my vision so grand that, that and this is the life of, Think about Henry Ford. Uh -huh. Forget about what you think of him as a person. Think about what he did. So everybody who must have been in the horse business, the hay business, the shoe, horseshoe business, the bridal business, the saddle business, the blanket business, the farm building business, all of those people wanted him out uh -huh, with the horseless carriage, right? They wanted it done. Uh -huh. Now think of Elon Musk. Think of Sam Walton. Think of, and these are business things, right? Think of Sam Walton, think of Elon Musk. I remember as a young guy, Sam Walton was the face of death. People thought he was the antichrist, right? As he, what did he do? He did, he put pressure on suppliers, but he also delivered products to the general public at a cost that nobody else has done. So what I'm gonna tell you is two things. Test and listen. This idea, this way of you becoming a beneficial presence might be having and managing a proper family and raising children in a particular way. Uh -huh. It might be starting a business. It might be you becoming a healer. It might be you opening a restaurant. And if anybody tells you that that's not a spiritual business, they don't know what a spiritual business is. A spiritual business is any business that deals with, a, with any living thing. Any business, uh -huh. that's a spiritual business. So there is no such thing as a non-spiritual business. I can't tell you. So if you're in it, you're in a spiritual business. Now, if you're going to change how something is done, you're going to fall under tremendous scrutiny. Imagine all of the people Jeff Bezos had to convince that we can actually sell everything in the world online. Uh -huh. Imagine, imagine how long and i'm going to tell you my thing on that when i was a younger guy and that amazon idea came up i thought it wouldn't work uh -huh. if uh the internet was active and i'm not the kind of guy to say oh this guy's crazy it's not that but i would have thought it right i would have thought it so i'm going to tell you that once this happens and this is the hardest thing do you know, I'm going to tell you something. When I started my plastic surgery business, I went to two of the best plastic surgeons in the United States. They were both in New York. And they told me that uh, what I was going to do would never work and that I shouldn't even start. And that excited me. Uh -huh. And and five years later, I had... I had uh, almost 90 million bucks. Yeah. So I'm going to tell you, <clears throat> all of the people around you, friend and foe, are going to try to talk you out of it. What do I mean by that? You know, there's there's uh, very well-intended uh, 
family and extended family that's going to say, Mary, you're crazy. You don't know how to run a restaurant. Uh, Dave, you don't know what a dog walking business is about. Uh, why are you learning to play guitar? There's already great guitarists out there. Uh, you know, you were never much of a dancer. Give up dancing. They'll be all over the place. And those are your friends. Then to go to the next level of your, your haters, right? And if your, if your dream is big enough, uh huh, then, and your haters uh, are giving you advice and you don't take it, that will even make them hate more because now they've a vested interest in what you're doing not working. Uh -huh. It's a, a magical thing. So, but then those who don't like you will start weighing in. That's a great test. Uh huh. It's a great test. But if you saw this vision from a merge place, don't ever let it go because I'm going to show you what happens if you do. If you buckle on that and you've, you've had a soul merger, you see how to become a beneficial presence and you say no to it because of peer pressure. Uh, a lot of people after they drink medicine call it a sober moment. Well, I'm gonna tell you something. Let me talk about that. So the idea that the medicine gave you was you at your highest potential and to you it seemed drunk. Uh huh. That how could I, a mere human with all of these natural faults and flaws, ever achieve something like that? Oh, it must have been ridiculous. It was ridiculous. It wasn't real. That's not true. Uh huh. What's not real is thinking that you, because of all that, can't do it. The medicine sees you at your fullest potential. You know, there are plant medicine places that say, hey, don't do anything after you have a plant medicine journey for at least six weeks. Don't make any life decisions. Don't make any, that's baloney. And it's such baloney. Uh, and, and I want to preface that with something. So uh, when I say the medicine sees you at your highest potential, it sees you at your highest exertion. So what you can't do is this. The medicine showed me that uh, I could open the greatest spiritual center of all time, spiritual uh, resort and spiritual community with housing, da, 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 da. And I said yes to it in that moment. And then, and then I said yes to it in life, but I didn't meet it halfway. What do I mean meet it halfway? I didn't exert a thousand percent of my energy towards that goal. There's the catch. Uh-huh. The medicine assumes that you're going to give everything within you to achieve that. So uh, I met a guy here that had some domains. This is in 2017. And the medicine told him that he would sell the domains for, I'm going to make numbers up because I forget. I think it was $3 million or something like that. He wrote me a year later and he goes, the medicine was wrong. And I said, well, what did you do to sell the domains? And he said, well, I didn't do anything. Well, what are we talking about? Uh huh. So, so you can't take a, a, a person who has not used follow through before, show them the biggest vision of themselves. And then, and then uh, they say yes to the vision, but they don't change anything about how they do it. It's never going to work. So I believe the medicine's intention is she shows you the vision of yourself and that makes it worth it for you to give everything to get that vision. Uh -huh. So in that line, a lot of times when family and friends are talking us out of it, it's because they haven't seen us succeed in the past, right? So the well-meaning group that talks us out of it is like, eh, you know, I never saw her successful at anything. Why is she going to be successful at this? You have to have a new mantra to yourself that I will do anything for this cause. Uh -huh. Then you changed. So it's not the same you that's doing this vision that you have of this great thing. 
right? So there's a lot of pieces to this, but it begins and ends with promises and commitments to ourself that are different than how we operated in the past. I'm a lucky, I'm a lucky guy, right? Because I get to meet so many different people and there are real differences between uh, people who haven't had commercial success and have tried and those people who have tried and had huge commercial success. I consider my commercial success very minimal, but I know uh, people, men and women, that have had commercial success 20 and 30 times greater than mine. And even in, in one case, maybe maybe 100 times greater than mine. And when I meet with them, they all have the same thing. Uh -huh. They all have a ton of self-control, a ton. They all have a beautiful work ethic. Everyone that I know is ethical, ethical. Uh, and they're stuck in their own belief of how something should be done. Uh -huh. They know something from a place within them about that. That's what you need to have. Because in this process of getting there, in the first seven years, it's usually really hard. It's wrought with failure. And, and so your, your naysayers, both friend and foe, every time you fall down, are going to cheer and stand up and say, I told you so. Uh -huh. And those times will be frequent. And in order to have the sinew, the grit to keep going, you're going to have to be locked in to your belief stronger than anything, stronger than anything. So this is why uh, the 1% is the 1% and what I call the two tenths. Two, so two out of a thousand uh, get to the hundred millionaire point, uh, two out of every thousand people. And those two out of a thousand have grit, determination, and will that is otherworldly. Now, you know, I didn't have that. I didn't have that. My in, my grit, determination, and will was was just enough to hang on, right? But those that really had it, really, really, really flourish. So I have that grit, determination, and will for this business. But the metric for this business isn't money; it's for how many people we help. Uh huh. And in that regard, we're doing a great job. A really, really, really great job. So when you do this and all this comes about, don't let anyone take this thing, you're becoming a beneficial presence on the planet, don't let anybody take that dream from you. I mean anybody. Husband, wife, girlfriend, child, mother, father, haters, non-haters, friends, foes, uh, family. Don't let anyone because your, your experience of this human experience is going to be largely predicated on how much you gave, not how much you took. Uh -huh. And that is going to be a result of how you pick uh, this beneficial presence, right? All right, I hope that motivates someone to, to really take a look at at, at their life and what they're working on and, and maybe even help some stay in uh, as opposed to, to leaving because once you leave and you'll see how easy it is to leave anything, uh, a community, a neighborhood, a family, a church, uh, uh, especially in this day and age for men, a family, uh, a company, a position, a goal, a dream, it's very easy to leave. But once you leave, you're always in startup again of something else. And startup is the hardest part of the journey. So, so you're constantly in startup. If you ever, you know, I, I know people in their 50s that have just constantly been involved in startups. It looks like they're a thousand years old because they're always going through this, the heavy lifting of the beginning. In order to get mastery, you have to stay in. So I'm going to ask you today,
that make it one of your goals to stay in. Uh, cheers. Thank you, guys. God bless you. God keep you. God hold you. And we'll chat to you next week. Please come to Rhythmia. I got two books. If any of these you think you can help you, please get them and have a wonderful, wonderful day.